Big Mac's story starts back in 2021 when Josh passed this giant during late season. Let's dive into that hunt. That was the biggest deer I've ever officially passed. I've passed some really good bucks, but that one was a mega giant, truly incredible. To see what that deer's gonna be, you know, in the next couple of years, just an unbelievable buck. We estimated Big Mac to be around five years old, and with him already pushing Boone, we thought with one more year, he could turn into an absolute giant. Like every summer, we worked really hard setting up the farm, prepping all the ground, doing tons and tons of farm work, getting ready for the 2022 season. We were so excited to see what Big Mac turned into. The anticipation was killing us. But to our surprise, our expectations were shattered. He not only got smaller, but he had clearly went downhill. He went from this big, typical 10 to a mainframe 9, but you can definitely tell he packed on a ton of mass and maybe even some beam length. Yes, he had clearly gotten smaller, but it's not uncommon for a deer that's going from 5 to 6 to sometimes go downhill and then bounce back and grow their biggest rack at 7. So we made the decision we were going to pass Big Mac again in 2022. into something really big this year. Winter came and went, and it was time to start making all the changes for 2023. This year, we were adding watering holes. Watering holes are so underrated for whitetails. We knew this would be a huge difference maker for the deer, so we were excited to get those put in. Summer was finally in full swing, and we couldn't wait to get cameras out on the farm and try to locate Big Mac. We got a lot of nice deer on camera, but to our surprise, not Big Mac. Feeling a small sense of regret for not shooting him last year, we kept running cameras in hopes he might come back. Summer came and went, and season finally opened up, but still, no sign of Big Mac. Worst of all, across all of Iowa, many EHD reports started coming in. Hunters were reporting losing huge numbers of deer, including big bucks. Deer disease. Yeah, the Iowa Department of Natural Resources says epizootic hemorrhagic disease, or EHD, is devastating deer populations. Since the second most severe EHD outbreak in Iowa's history hit the area earlier this year, he says those numbers have dramatically dwindled. It's a disease that kills deer within days causing hemorrhaging of internal organs, EHD is capable of wiping out hundreds of deer within months. And the Iowa DNR says this year's outbreak has done massive damage to the area's deer population. We feared this was likely Big Mac's demise. Feeling defeated, we held our heads high and continued running cameras for the sliver of hope he might show up. Then, like a gift from God, on October 6th, he showed up. At seven years old, Big Mac grew into an absolute mega giant. His frame was nothing short of legendary. He was crazy wide, he had huge beams and extraordinary mass. He even threw a couple of extras off his main frame. He truly was an Iowa mega giant. All of our focus shifted to hunting Big Mac. At the ages of five and six, he was not a difficult deer to hunt, but for whatever reason at seven, he turned into a totally different beast. He was extremely nomadic and rarely did the same thing twice. When you have deer like this, there's only one way to get them killed. You have to spend a ton of time in the stand. So that is exactly what I did. I hunted day in and day out. We saw a lot of great deer, but no sign of Big Mac. Ago, 
hiding. We just had three bucks come down over the hill, dog in the dough. One was a nice buck, just obviously not Big Mac. This buck gets really good. I was so excited about it because as the morning goes, we get up to 16 mile an hour winds from the south. So the deer will move into the timber and probably further down like where we are just to get out of the wind. So hopefully uh, as the morning goes on, this gets better and better. And so far that's the case. This was not good. It's so hard to get one chance at a seven-year-old nomadic buck, but now getting a second chance would be nearly impossible, but I was not going to give up. He started showing up less and less, and then not at all. Then my discipline, willpower, and faith would be tested as a different giant showed up. I gotta be honest, if Josh wasn't there, I would have shot that buck. This has been a really tough season, especially with two toddlers at home. I would have loved to shoot this buck, but Josh reminded me. You can't rob the future for today. It's not that buck's time yet. Though I wasn't happy about it, I knew he was right. I'm always right. Then we got another trail camera video of Big Mac. He was so impressive. You just don't see deer with this big of frame, mass, and beams very often. Every picture and video we got of him just left us in awe. I knew it was going to be him or nothing. But now the rut was full swing and the deer were going crazy. Contrary to what most hunters like, I actually hate the rut. 
Big Mac was here today and could be five miles from us tomorrow chasing a doe. When it comes to hunting one specific deer, the rut is the worst time to get him killed. During the rut, these mature bucks only care about one thing, and it's not food. But I hunted the rut anyways for a chance that a hot doe might come through with Big Mac on her tail. Then he disappeared again for a while and we thought for sure he was dead, but he showed back up on November 19th. However, this time he came back with a bad injury to his eye. You could see this old warrior had been in battle and lost his eye. You hate to see this, but all we could do is just keep hunting him. With the rut winding down, we knew this was going to be our chance of getting Big Mac. Once the rut is over, it's back to the food. With him obviously hating the blind, Josh thought it would be best to camouflage it better. So that's exactly what he did. November 24th, and we are still after Big Mac. Man, he has just went completely nomadic on us. He was gone for weeks, which is pretty typical, you know, during the rut and all this, but you know, right around Thanksgiving is when all that starts to change. They stop chasing girls as much, and they start re-honing back in on food. And so that's kind of where we're hoping he'll be tonight, so. Hunt over uh, some knockdown corn. It's going to be a really good spot. I mean, it's where we've been hunting them all year. And just didn't, haven't had the luck. But, you know, we're just hoping that tonight's the night. I guess we'll see. Sarah, good luck, honey. We'll see you in the blind. Awesome guys. I mean, what a day. The field is literally filling up. I mean, there's just buck after buck showing up. Nothing super old and mature yet, but I mean, it's not even four o'clock. But there's a lot of deer on their feet, so this is exciting. Whew, man. I'm, I might get nervous for you, so I'm like freaking out. What is it? right there. It's him? Yeah. Oh my god. Is it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That is our boy. He is here. Oh my gosh, honey.
he's still pretty nervous about this blind. And his one more good working eye is still here. He's right here. He's like 28. Okay. Oh, I think you smashed him. Oh, I think you smashed him. I hate that he took a step on me, but after seeing the blood spray out on impact and the amount that was gushing after he stopped, I was confident the beast broadhead pulled its weight and he died fast. But either way, with a shot like that, it was best we wait until morning. The next morning, with anticipation and excitement, we set out to track Big Mac. So blood, 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 and then blood. I mean, there's a lot of blood right here. And you can see where he landed. There's just blood everywhere. Yeah, look at this. There's a ton of blood here. I mean, just, he was just gushing and gushing. He's right there. Where? Right there. You see him? Yeah. Where? Right there. Oh my gosh, he didn't go anywhere, honey. Look guys, right through there, right through there. I mean, not even 65 yards. Holy smokes. He died literally that right, almost oh. right then. My God. Oh my what a beast. Oh. Here, I'll help you get him up. Oh. oh my gosh, honey. What a tank. Big Mac had truly become a massive beast in his final year. His rack was like nothing I've ever held. He had tall tines, long beams, heavy mass, and a frame I just couldn't believe. We taped him out just over a staggering 177 inches. As we stood over him, we couldn't help but feel a mix of pride, gratitude, and sadness. Big Mac had been a part of our lives for years, and now he would be forever a memory. We took a moment to reflect on the journey we had with Big Mac. The highs and the lows, the anticipations and disappointments. I'm sorry, honey, I don't, I don't know what to say. Like every deer, we cherish the time spent hunting, grateful for the lessons learned, and most importantly, the memories made. But I kept hunting. But I kept hunting. I kept hunting. Damn it! All right, <laughs> serious. But I kept hunting. But, but I kept hunting. Then, Do that again. No. <laughs> one more. Come on. But I kept hunting. Oh my God, that was so good. I felt that one too. Remember, he was consistent, then he disappeared. What an asshole. It wasn't this buck's time yet. But if we're arguing back and forth, I'm not gonna go into like, Josh reminded me that the, we can't rob the future for today, as we're like, you 
like I'm shooting this deer. Like, that's not gonna happen. I mean, you guys have to bring it back. Yes. Why can't we say, like, as you can tell, we usually get divorced every deer season. That's why Josh won't let me shoot a deer and I'm over it. And then all that gets taken out of context in the blooper reels, and then it's.